parliament has made has said it that the people to whom the letter was written, members of parliament, will be in position to inform the public and their fellow members of parliament on the contents of the letter. But as I speak, the speaker has made a decision and has ably communicated it to the petitioners accordingly. This was the official communication of parliament despite that the petitioners had not yet received the speaker's letter. At 2.30 p.m. and Kabale Municipality MP Andrew Ajabaria Yanga, one of the petitioners had been called in the office of the speaker to pick the letter. According to an extract of the letter, Speaker Kadaga says, I quote, it is also my view that if the withdrawal of signatures leads to the remaining signatures to fall below those set by the constitution for such a petition, then it becomes ineligible for further processing. So it's on that basis that she says we don't have the required minimum of 125 signatures. In her letter, the speaker also says the rules of procedure relating to the recall of parliament, citing Rule 20, do not specifically provide for the issue of the withdrawal of the signatures, but, in her opinion, said they can be withdrawn as long as the speaker has not acted on the petition yet. If there is a forgery in the petition, you can't advance, you can't use a ground which revolves around forgery for recalling parliament. To the Attorney General, being a part of a government that is threatening the institution of parliament, I am, I am, I am not surprised. I am not surprised. And uh, the best thing they would do, they would want to see is a, 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 a place where there is no parliament. The speaker's letter stresses that on January 8, 2013, a written complaint was received from the MP Fred Abil protesting and challenging his purported signature in the support of the petition. In view of the controversies, Speaker Kadaga says in her letter that she finds the petition does not meet the requirements as set out in Article 95 of the Constitution and Rule 20 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament and that she was unable to act on the petition submitted to her office. Just because we want to appease one individual, that one we will definitely not accept. We will challenge that decision one way or the other. If the speaker states that uh, she, before receiving the petition, she had received um, people retracting, the, recalling their signatures, how could they recall signatures that she did not have in the first place? Were they doing it in anticipation? <coughs> I mean, it offends our rules to operate. Some of the grounds, if not all the grounds that we had advanced, were unconstitutional. So you can't rely on something illegal. If you look at the petition, for example, they say, because members of parliament, some three or four members of parliament were arrested, so there is likely to be a wave of arrests. What is the basis of that? But the Speaker of Parliament has been perceived as having betrayed the independence of Parliament. Ugandans were waiting eagerly to see what type of a decision she would take. Is she going to uphold the independence of another arm of government or she is going to succumb to the pressure of the President and choose to behave like a minister within the executive? Considering the series of meetings that took place in the State House in regard to the matter we are talking about, it is not surprising that the Speaker succumbed to the pressure. This group says the Speaker ignored a legal precedent in the Sixth Parliament, where then Speaker of Parliament James Wakapabulo objected the recall of 17 signatures from MPs who wanted to save then Minister of Primary Education Jim Wesey from being censured. 17 people withdrew their signatures, went to the Speaker and said they wrote that we are no longer interested in the motion, which meant that the motion was supported by only about 73, which was less than a third. Timothy Basi, the Establishment Parliament.